and from our discussions on estimation we know that just the point estimates are never enough so we should always accompany them along with the standard errors so following the properties of mle estimators so if you recall maximum likelihood estimators uh, are multivariate normal with the mean being equal to the true parameters and the variance covariance matrix is given by the inverse of the fisher information matrix but we do not know what is the fisher information matrix and therefore we replace it with the observed information matrix and the inverse of that and that is evaluated at the mle estimators so evaluated at theta equal to theta hat in this case beta beta not hat and beta 1 hat right so uh, this is how we get the variance covariance matrix and we know that the diagonal terms of this matrix gives us the variance of the individual estimators so if you use those expressions in the diagonal terms then we will see that the standard errors of these estimators beta not hat and beta 1 hat that we obtain from the method of maximum likelihood estimation is exactly the same as the method of least squares estimates a method of least square standard deviations okay now uh, what about sigma square then although we noted that sigma square is not that important a parameter here uh, but uh, it can be shown theoretically that its distribution its sampling distribution is given by the sampling distribution belonging to a chi square distribution so this distribution of sigma square can be obtained by the fact that the distribution of rss divided by sigma square belongs to chi square distribution to n minus 2 degrees of freedom okay and it is independent of the regression coefficients beta not hat and beta 1 hat which means if i write a variance covariance matrix which is 3 by 3 then the third column and the third row would have zeros uh, in the off diagonal terms right so uh, again here sigma square is not an important parameter here we most often in simple linear regression will never do hypothesis testing on sigma square but let me just uh, spend a little more time on what this chi square distribution really is if you had recalled basic discussion on random variables which i had asked you to brush up right at the beginning of the course then you would recall that a function of a random variable is also a random variable and if we have several random variables z1 z2 these are all capital z's right z k these are all standard normal so they belong to standard normal which has mean 0 variance 1 then the summation of uh, maybe i'll write it i equal to 1 to k the summation of all the z i squares this is a function of the random variables and this itself is a random variable so this random variable summation of zi square belongs to by definition the chi square distribution with k degrees of freedom so this is the greek letter chi c h i right chi square distribution with k degrees of freedom this is the definition of chi square distribution if you have a parent random variable z1 to zk set of random variables which are standard normal then the sum of their squares belong to a distribution which is called the chi square distribution and it has k degrees of freedom so when we refer to the to the table of the chi square distribution we will see that there is A, a particular parameter along which we have to look and that's the degrees of freedom okay uh, the other important thing here to note is that in the expression of standard error so in the diagonal terms here you will see there's a multiplier sigma square divided by sxx this sigma square is true 
parameter but the true sigma square is never known so in order to get the standard errors of beta naught hat and beta 1 hat instead of using the true value of sigma square we replace it with sigma square hat so that's how we get the standard errors of beta naught hat and beta 1 hat so in the previous slide we discussed about how a function of a random variable is also a random variable and how we can get the chi-square degrees of freedom from the parent distribution which was standard normal. Now in this slide we are going to talk about another such distribution which is called the student's t distribution. Okay, Here if, if the parent variables, parent random variables x1, x2 etc are iid normal so they belong to normal dis distribution note that it is normal distribution not standard normal so they belong to the normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square then of course there will be you can define another random variable which will be the mean of this these random variables x bar which would be nothing but summation of xi divided by n okay then we can define another random variable z such that z is x bar minus mu by sigma by root n. So this random variable z x bar minus u by sigma by root n will belong to the standard normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. How does this come from? This comes from the central limit theorem which is of course one of the most popular theorems in statistics loosely put what this theorem is stating is that if you had a parent uh, random variable belonging to some distribution and if you take the mean of that var of several such random variables then their mean would tend to belong to the normal distribution if you if your parent distribution to begin with was normal and if you are standardizing by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation in some form so subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation then the variable that you get by such a transformation will obviously have a mean zero and because you have divided by the standard deviation it will have a standard deviation of one so again why mean 0 because we are subtracting the mean so from every random variable we have subtracted the mean which was its own mean the distribution of the mean to which that random variable belonged so intuitively this is what the central limit theorem tells us that if you had a random variable which is normal to begin with with some mean and variance if you standardized by subtracting the mean and dividing by the variance then the resultant random variable would belong to the standard normal distribution now note here that in the definition of z the transformed random variable we are using sigma however sigma denotes the true standard deviation which is often not known we don't know what is the true standard deviation if we do not know the true standard def uh, deviation we replace it with the sample standard deviation then instead of the transformed variable z we will write another transformed variable y so now i write y the transformed variable is x bar minus mu divided by s by square root of n where s is the sample standard deviation okay by definition of the student's t distribution this variable y will belong to the student's t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom similar to what how the chi square distribution was defined so in this case we have another random variable a transformed random variable y which is given by x bar minus mu divided by s by root n where s is the sample standard deviation so this is basically the definition of students t distribution 
and why do we need to study this because when we do hypothesis testing on the regression coefficients we have to use this t distribution so now that we know the mle estimate estimators beta not hat and beta 1 hat and from our basic background which we learned about in module 2 estimation we can write that the confidence interval of beta not hat would be nothing but beta not hat plus and minus some critical value times the standard error of beta not hat and similarly for the other regression coefficient beta 1 we can write the confidence interval of beta 1 hat would be beta 1 hat plus and minus critical value times the standard error of beta 1 hat this critical value we know from our earlier discussions in module 2 that this critical value depends on the sampling distribution of beta naught hat and beta 1 hat and it also depends on the chosen level of significance alpha in the case of simple linear regression please recall that for using for these for getting the standard errors of beta naught hat and beta 1 hat we use uh, an estimate of sigma square the sigma square hat that we use is also an estimator because the true sigma square is not known and this is because and because of this reason the critical values here and here these two critical values actually for simple linear regression they come from the students t distribution so they come from students t distribution and that's because true sigma square is unknown so once we know that this uh, critical value comes from the students t distribution and once we have a chosen level of significance alpha then we can write a 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence intervals for each of beta naught hat and beta 1 hat and those would be given by beta naught hat plus and minus the critical value which in this case would be t 1 minus alpha by 2 which is the level of which depends on the level of significance and n minus 2 which is the degree of freedom so when we refer to the students t distribution tables we will see that there is a marker which is called the degree of freedom and for different degrees of freedom the t variate is given for different probabilities so we have to refer to that row or that column depending on how you present your table which corresponds to the n minus 2 degrees of freedom so this becomes the new critical value for beta naught hat and similarly for beta 1 hat it would be beta 1 hat plus and minus the critical value is now coming from the t distribution so t with n minus 2 degrees of freedom and 1 minus alpha by 2 probability times of course the standard errors so this is how we obtain the confidence intervals of these MLE estimators of the regression coefficients beta naught hat and beta 1 hat.